Great to see you this afternoon. Welcome. Merry Christmas. Turn to your neighbor and say Merry Christmas around the room. Wanted to welcome everybody online. Crossroads Recovery, we welcome you guys as well. Give Crossroads a big hand this afternoon. And we want to welcome everybody that's watching. I was just over there a little bit ago. Everybody watching over in our family service and our youth center. Give them a big hand. We welcome them into the live message here today. Well, we often hear people make this statement. I'm just going through a season. And we've been in a series called Seasons. We've talked about spring, which is all about new beginnings, and summer, which is all about growing, and the fall, which is all about reaping. And we're going to end this series this afternoon with the season that we've all felt in our lives. Maybe some of you are there right now. We're going to talk about the season of, say it with me, winter. Say it again. Winter. In Phoenix, we know this is three days in January, right? And maybe not necessarily consecutive days in January. But how many of you grew up in the Midwest? Any Midwest folks here? Oh, yeah. To all my family tuning in from Illinois, I had to shovel sunshine to get to my car this morning. It was really difficult, all right? So if you grew up in the Midwest, maybe the, any East Coast folks in here, you know about long, long winters. Chris Moore, our youth pastor, says he grew up in Montana. He says, winter is a season of surviving, just getting through, waiting for spring to come. There's been a song called Seasons that was put together by Hillsong Worship. It's been the inspiration, one of the pieces of inspiration that we've used this year for this entire series. There's a line in this song that rings so true in my soul. It says this, for all I know of seasons is that you take your time. Have you ever felt like God was just taking his time in a season of your life? Can I get a witness? Can I get a mm-hmm from anybody this afternoon? For all I know of seasons is that you take your time. And this is what we all know when we're in a winter season. A winter season of our soul is all about, wait for it, waiting. Say it again, waiting. Smile at your neighbor and say it, waiting. And this is what I know about waiting. We hate it. Does anybody like to wait? Anybody like to go over to the mall and just wait in line? Don't you like that? And they've hired all kinds of new staff at the stores and they don't know how to run the computer and the register and you're just waiting and the people in front of you have lots of coupons and they're asking questions about can I use my credit card and get extra 20% off and you're just waiting. Have you ever waited in traffic? How many like waiting in traffic? You ever been near Arrowhead Mall this time of year? Yeah, I prayed for the rapture the other day near Merrill Arrowhead Mall. I'm like, God, take me up, leave my car. I don't care right now. Have you ever been waiting in traffic and had a meltdown? Yeah. Okay, have you ever said things? I wrote some things down. Have you ever said things like this as you're waiting in traffic? Come on, man. Seriously, move. Get out of my way. I don't have all day. Anybody? Yeah. Have you ever, after your meltdown, pulled out and just sped around everybody? Have you ever done that? How many have done that, had a meltdown in traffic? And then realized you had a pure heart window sticker. <laughs> you ever, come on. You know what I'm talking about? And you're thinking, oh no, I got a pure heart window sticker. How many have done that? Anybody? Come on, be honest. Get the sin out there today, okay? All of you raised your hands. After service, we have a team of people who will take those stickers off your car, all right? <laughs> and we'll put a CCV one on there for you. Be, thank you. Thank you very much. That's, that's really good. We saved that just for the fourth service today. I'll get a little drum roll right there. Just kidding. It'll be a Calvary sticker. Okay, so this song, Seasons, by Hillsong, uh, the words are so powerful. I listened to it over and over and over again this week as I was preparing for the message. Um, listen to the song that our team has put together this afternoon. Like a frost on a road Winter comes for us all Oh, how nature acquaints us With the nature of patience Like a seed in the snow I've been buried to grow For your promises, loyal from sea to sequoia and i know though the winter's long even richer the harvest it brings though i'm waiting for longs even greater your promise for me like a seed I believe that my season will come. 
But I think of your love Like a low winter sun And as I gaze I am blinded In the light of your brightness Like a fire to the snow Melt the ice of this wild soul Till the barren is beautiful And I I can see the promise, I can see the future Cause you're the God of seasons, I'm just in the winter All I know of harvest is that it's worth my patience Cause if you're not done working, God I'm not done waiting You can see my promise, even in the winter Cause you're the God of greatness, even in a manger for all I know, Jesus, is that you take your time You could have saved us in a second Instead you sent a child The is long, even richer For the sake of a song From Bethlehem soil Grew Calvary Sequoia Oh, I oh, love that song. So open your Bibles with me this afternoon and go with me to, to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. The verses will be up on the screens as well. You can follow along in your bulletin notes as well. Open your Bible apps. Here we go. Luke chapter 2. As I looked at the Christmas story again this year, the Holy Spirit reminded me that the human experience of waiting was a central theme. Before the birth of Jesus, all of Israel was surviving under Roman occupation. They were waiting for a deliverer. They were waiting for the Messiah, if you will. They were in the winter. In Luke chapter 2 tells the story of the birth of Jesus. And usually we stop somewhere around verse 22. But it's the part that comes after Joseph, Mary, the baby, angels, shepherds, glory, hallelujah. I want to focus on this Christmas Eve service. So Joseph and Mary take Jesus to Jerusalem to dedicate him to God, which was a custom for a firstborn child. Jesus is only a few days old. Then Luke records an unexpected moment. A seldom mentioned man in Luke chapter 2, and we're going to pick up his story in verse 25. It says this, there was a man in Jerusalem called, say it with me, Simeon. He was righteous and he was devout. Now this next statement is why I chose Simeon for Christmas Eve service 2018. Read it with me. Ready, go. He was waiting. Say it again. He was waiting. Say it again like you understand it. He was waiting. I have an important question for you this Christmas. What are you waiting for? Uh, maybe it's a, a Christmas gift you ordered online that's still not here yet. Just a couple days to go. More importantly, maybe you're waiting for a job. 
Maybe a friendship. Um, maybe love. Maybe you're waiting for marriage or a promise from God to be fulfilled. Maybe the end of a trial that you've been going through. Maybe you're waiting for a child to mature, a teen to mature, a young adult to mature. Maybe a spouse to come home. Maybe your health to return. Maybe depression. Maybe a sadness that's on your soul that you're just waiting for it to be lifted. So what was Simeon waiting for? I'm glad you asked. Verse 25. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. Now, in the original language, the Greek language in which the New Testament was written, the word consolation is the idea of a comforter, a person who will come to bring comfort. Simeon was waiting to be comforted. All of Israel had known nothing but war for hundreds and hundreds of years. It started with the Assyrians and then the Babylonians and then the Persians, the Greeks, and now the Romans were occupying all of, the, all of Israel. And listen to what God promised to Simeon. In the midst of his waiting season, this is what he said to him. It had been revealed to him, to Simeon, by the Holy Spirit, that he would not die before he had seen with his own eyes the Lord's Christ. Simeon was waiting for the Messiah. He was waiting for a promise from God. Have you ever been there? And this is what has happened. He goes to the temple. Moved by the Holy Spirit, Simeon goes up to the temple. As Simeon is coming into the temple, in walk Mary and Joseph and bear baby Jesus. Right at the same time, in verse 28, we pick up the story. It says this, Simeon took him in his arms. Can you imagine this moment? And he praised God. Now, time out. Let's think about this for a second. Let's put ourselves in the story. How many ladies do we have here this afternoon? Ladies, give a shout. Ladies, come on. Come on one more time. Ladies, come on. Give a shout. You're out there? All right. How many of you ladies have had a child? Okay, all right, oh, okay, I understand. All right, so I don't, really don't understand, but I just wanted to pretend. Okay, so you've had a child. Do you remember your firstborn? You remember how if you could have bubble wrapped him and popped a hole for him to breathe, you'd have done it? You remember, you remember something, you were so protective of your firstborn child? Do you remember when the, the, the child had a binky in their mouth? Do you remember this? And remember what the binky would fall out onto the ground? Do you remember what you would do? Throw it away. Yeah, you'd throw it away. If you couldn't throw it away, because you, you had like racks of new binkies somewhere. This magically would appear. Boom, you'd whip them out of your purse. Binkies, all right? Imagine, imagine, imagine if you will, if you will. How many of you had more than one child? Okay, yeah. By your third child, that binky could fall out of the mouth in the backyard on a pile of dog stuff, and you would pick it up, brush it off, pop it right back in the baby's mouth. By the, didn't you, by the third child. You're thinking to yourself, their immune system will be stronger. All right, I'm going to actually help the child. Now, and I want you to imagine it's your firstborn child. Forget the third, okay? It's your firstborn child. Don't forget the third, but just it's the firstborn, okay? And you, it's been a lot of services, all right? So, and you show up at church for the first time with your brand new firstborn child, baby child, and you're, you're carrying him, and all of a sudden you walk into the lobby, and an old dude grabs the baby out of your arms, lifts it like Lion King, ah, Savinia, Mr. however that thing goes, you know? What would you do? You would go Mama Goldberg on that dude. You'd start throwing hands at that guy. Simeon takes the baby out of Mary's hands, begins to praise God. Imagine the moment. They're like, they didn't expect that. And so it goes on. This is what Simeon says. He says, Sovereign Lord, you have promised, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For I have seen your salvation. Imagine what Mary and Joseph were hearing. This guy takes their baby and proclaims, I can now die because I've seen the salvation of the world. They did not expect that. And not just for the Jewish people, God's chosen people, but how many of you here today are not Jewish? Raise your hand. That would mean you were Gentile. If you're Gentile, this is for you as well. How many are excited about that? Anybody excited about that? Good, good. About 40 of you, that's fantastic goes on, a light of revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory to your people, Israel. See, Gentiles weren't even allowed into the temple. Mary and Joseph had to be thinking, what kind of a child is this? This is not what they expect. And you think I'm being overdramatic and kind of just getting all, you know, crazy right now? Understand, look at the next line. The child's father and mother, what? They marveled at what was said about Jesus. And now Simeon's not done talking. And so he blesses Mary and Joseph. He blesses baby Jesus. 
And then Simeon turns with a message just for Mary. Ladies, imagine if this is what's spoken about by your firstborn child. It says this, he looked at Mary and he said, this child is destined to cause the falling and the rising of many in Israel and will be a sign. This word sign in the Greek language is the idea of a target that you shoot at. And he will be a sign spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword. And check this out. Now, I don't know his body language. We don't know his tone of voice. I always tell you that one day when we're in heaven, I hope we get a chance to kind of go back and have like a replay of, of these moments, you know, like a video highlight center that we can all go visit or something like that. And there's this moment he leans into Mary, and I don't know how he said it. I don't know his body language, but I know his words. And he said, and a sword, Mary, a sword will pierce your own soul too. And by the way, Mary, your baby's story will not unfold as you expected. When Jesus was crucified, the soldier took the spear, took the sword, and pierced his side. The sword punctured a sack of fluid that built up around Jesus' physical heart because of the trauma that he had gone through, the beating that he had faced. And that sword metaphorically pierced the heart of Mary as well. And that was not what she expected for her baby boy. You see, it's in the waiting. It's in the waiting we discover a very great tension Attention. We discover a great tension in these winter waiting seasons between our expectations and God's execution of those expectations. Can I get an uh huh from anybody this afternoon? Has God ever done something the opposite of the way you thought that He should do it? A thing, have you had some unexpected things happen in your life? See, one of our greatest struggles in life is failed expectations. Has that ever happened to you? Have you ever received a Christmas gift you didn't expect? Like you're expecting a Christmas bonus and you got a Jelly of the Month Club. Have you ever had that happen? It's the gift that keeps on giving all year long, Clark. All right? Anybody in here married? Any married folks here? Hey, good job, Don. Good job, man. You're going to get an A for that. Let me try that again. Any married folks here? All right. Yeah, I was getting excited about that. Don't, don't look around right now. I'm going to ask you a question. Okay, don't look around. Look at me. Has it gone the way you expected? Don't answer that out loud. Do not. Some guys are like, better. It's better. That's better. Yeah. I remember when Nicole and I were first married and we, uh, we were pregnant with our first child. I say we because I was involved in the beginning. All right. So, so never mind. So we, we were pregnant and I remember she got this book for the pregnancy and this book was very important to her. You had like the Bible and then this book. It was called What to Expect When You're... Oh, you know it, ladies. And whenever she would pull this book out, I would be traumatized because she would read to me the things that I had done to her, okay? She would say, it's in the first, and this is what I can expect in the first book. And then she would read this horrifying list of things that were happening to her body and what was going on. By the ninth month, I dreaded the book. But I remember in the ninth month, it was at 2.15 in the morning, and I remember I could hear her wrestling in bed, and so I laid very still. And all of a sudden, she turned on the light. You ever heard light? You can hear light at 2.15 in the morning. It was like, psh, and the light came on. And I remember just laying there in the bed, and I heard her get the book, and she was sighing, and she was having heartburn. Any ladies, did you have the heartburn? Yeah, she was having heartburn. And she had the book. I knew she had the book. She was thumbing through it. I could hear the pages. And she was going through the pages and suddenly she stopped and she sighed and she slammed the book shut and she said these words, I will never forget them. She said, what to expect when you're expecting? And she slammed the book on the table. Boom, misery, that's what. <laughs> and I stopped breathing. And I laid there quietly praying for it all to pass. It doesn't always go like you're expecting. In 2000, there's a baby right there. In 2018, did some things happen that you didn't expect? Some things go differently than you thought that they would go. So the question before we start 2019 is what are you expecting? Can, can I give you a heads up? May I prepare you for the next year? This is going to be so deep. Are you ready? You're just going to blow your side. If you want to take notes, I'd start, get ready to write down or type in your phone. Get ready, okay? You can expect that it won't always go the way you expect it. Just turn to your neighbor and go, he's so deep by the fourth service. 
No kidding, Pastor Dan. But in hindsight, but in hindsight, it will prove to turn out better than you ever expected. Because God has this amazing ability to even take the most difficult things in our lives and turn them towards good. The Bible promises that all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purposes. You can, you can expect that even in the difficult seasons that God has the ability to turn that in such a way that you might find your greatest ministry, the greatest impact of your life, and you'll find purpose on the other side as you hold on to him and trust him with your life. That's right. You see, things always haven't gone the way I expected. This church isn't what I expected. I've told you this before. My plan, my dream was I was going to plant a church way out in Buckeye about 15 years ago. Brand new home starts, all kinds of new families. Buckeye, Arizona, it was going to be amazing. And God chose to plant me in an area where there was no new home starts, where the campus was an absolute disaster and did a miracle in this place. I didn't expect record growth. I didn't expect thousands of people coming to see Jesus in this place. I didn't see school connect with 20,000 volunteers and 450 schools. I didn't see Crossroads Recovery with 111 guys baptized already this year. Give God a huge hand for that. I, I didn't see the governor inviting Pure Heart to be involved in mental health issues and the opioid, opioid crisis in our city. I didn't see that. I didn't expect that. When we remodeled this campus this year, I thought, well, maybe what we'll do is we'll fix up the dome. We'll, we'll take all six colors of carpet and make them one. I thought maybe we'd have a small cafe. And I didn't expect a 350-seat youth auditorium, a 28,000-square-foot children's center, and brush fire tacos. I, I didn't see that coming. I didn't expect to be given a church this year, an entire campus in Peoria, a brand new campus that on January the 2nd, and you can join us that evening as we pray and dedicate that campus and ask God for wisdom and how to utilize it for his glory over this next year and the years to come. And I, and I know for some of you, maybe you're visiting, and, and for those of you who are visiting today, I just want to say something. Some of you might be thinking to yourself, yeah, 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 large church guy, you, you think I get it all together? I heard you were flying around over to Israel. I saw the Instagram posts, you know. And what do you know of waiting? What, what do you know of pain? Seems like you've got life pretty much together. See, for those of you who are, are new here today, I know a lot about waiting. I know a lot about pain. I know what it's like to go through divorce. I know what it's like when my first wife left for another man. I remember my very first Christmas Eve alone, single, again, it was not what I expected. I will never forget walking from the high school that we were meeting in as a church to my car, all by myself. Everybody's smiling and saying goodbye to everybody, everybody hugging, everybody hugging me and saying, we're praying for you, we're praying for you, we're praying for you. And as I walked to my car by myself, I will never forget that moment of thinking, will I ever be loved again? Will I ever have a family? Will I have children? You see, I didn't see Nicole Parati. I didn't see my wonderful wife that God was gonna bring into my life. I didn't see Joshua, Luke, and Abigail at that point. All I knew was a season of winter, and I was waiting. I know what it's like to face your immortality. I had blood, multiple embolisms go into my lungs, and uh, the doctor said it was a miracle that I was still alive. I know what it's like to lay in a hospital bed and, and, and thinking to yourself, what if one of those clots breaks loose and goes to my brain? I know what it's like to wait. I know the rejection in relationships. I know the rejection of a, a man who was a spiritual father in my life, a mentor in my life. I remember thinking to myself, will I continue to be in ministry? Will I survive this incredible, powerful, painful split in ministry in my life? See, my story hasn't always gone the way I expected but I wouldn't change my story. I wouldn't change the man that God has made me to be. I wouldn't change the things that I've been honored to do. I'm where I'm at today because of winter seasons. And in those moments, God met me and he faithfully walked me through the most difficult times of my life to form the character that I have today, the perspective about life that I have today, the way I love today, in many ways, my ability to connect with many of you because you too know all about waiting in the winter. 
See, hindsight is always 2020. One day, one moment, we'll look back and we'll say, oh, I see, it all makes some sense now. So in the winter, it's good to remind yourself that spring is coming, that a new beginning will happen. The pain now will be part of the joy later when we will all finally say, hallelujah. about this baby boy who's come to earth to bring us joy and I just want to sing this song to you it goes like this the fourth the fifth the minor fall the major lift and every breath I'm singing
favorite line from that song, and I listen to it over and over and over this week, is, for I know you came to rescue me. This baby boy would grow to be a man who one day died for me. I didn't expect that. I didn't expect to be loved like that. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. God demonstrated his own love for me in this, that while I was still a sinner, Christ died for me. I didn't expect that. Bow your heads with me for just a moment. Talk to a couple of groups of people. First of all, to those of you listening online in the, maybe in the, in the family room over there in the youth center and sitting here with me, and you're a follower of Christ. We don't know all that 2019 holds for us but we know who holds our 2019. Can I get an amen? We know whose hands that we are in. We know what direction he can take us. We know his strength, his power, his grace, his love, his mercy. So you can expect that he will be with you every step of the way. You can expect that as you trust him, he will do things in your life you never dreamed if you hold on to him. And trust his direction and not your own feelings. Make that commitment this Christmas Eve to trust him like never before. For others today, we don't want to end this service without giving you the opportunity to make the greatest decision of your life. Maybe some of you sitting here, some of you listening online, some of you over in our family service. Maybe you've never asked Jesus to lead your life. You've never submitted your life, surrendered your life, trusted him with your life. It's the greatest decision you will ever make. And maybe for you, it's a first time decision. Maybe for you, it's not a first time decision. Maybe a Christmas Eve a year ago or two years ago or 10 years ago, you made the same decision. But if we can hang out and visit together after the service, you could tell me a story about how you've just kind of wandered and been doing your own thing and going your own way. And you are not here by chance. You are not listening by chance. God wanted a moment to slow your roll down long enough to remind you that he loves you and to call you back home to him. And so if you're listening online, I'll start with you. If you're listening online, Right there on your screen, you'll see a button that says, today I put my trust in Jesus. Click that. And in just a moment, I want to invite you to pray with the rest of us who are making this decision to follow Jesus today for the first time or today as a rededication of our lives. For those of you in the family center and for those of you sitting here in this room today, if you're ready to make that decision to say, Jesus, be Lord of my life, or Jesus, I rededicate my life to you today. If you're ready to make that decision, what we do with heads bowed, what we do in this safe place is we raise our hands high. And when you raise your hands high, you're saying, that's me. Hands are already going up. If you're saying, that's me, I need Christ. So without hesitation, just raise your hand up really high so I can see. Just raise them up all over the room. Yes, and yes, Anyone, and yes over here. Anyone else? Yes, I see you guys back there. Anyone else? That's fantastic. I need Christ today. All of you with your hands raised, go ahead and put them down right now. Put them down. Yeah, I see you, brother. Put them down. Pray this in your heart. Jesus hears you. Say this, Lord Jesus. Right now in this moment, I commit my life to you. Jesus, I trust you with my life. This is important, tell him this. Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Lord, you know what it is. I give it to you right now. I confess it is wrong. Say this, thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for never giving up on me. Jesus, I trust you with my life. Now say this, fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your presence, with your love, your joy, your peace, your healing, your hope. Fill me, Lord, with your presence. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Come on, let's give God a huge hand. What a great journey we've been already. Fantastic, fantastic.